What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Daniel, and today we're gonna to be talking about the cons of meditation. If any of y'all have been meditating for any amount of time, y'all will probably relate to some of these cons. All right, these cons of meditation should not scare you and make you not want to meditate. It is just to inform you that meditation affects your life in positive and negative ways. So let's get right into it, man. If you can relate to any of these cons of meditation, leave a like and comment. Okay, the first con of meditation. You become more sensitive to stimuli. You instantly become more sensitive to things like noises, people, light. All these things can irritate you. Like the littlest thing, if a person does something, because you meditate and you're so aware and in a moment, the littlest thing can annoy you. Like, it's not that you want to snap on the person. It's that you you hear. It's like you feel it. You're so sensitive to it. You feel me? Like, emotions, all of that. You become ultra sensitive. Because when you meditate and you calm down and you sit in the present moment and feel your emotions, you become more sensitive. Now we're going to go over con number two. You feel no need to respond or speak. Okay. This one might be a pro for some of y'all. Okay. For me, I'm already a quiet person. So when you tell me it's going to make me want to respond less to people and speak less, because they're two different things. If I talk to you and you don't respond, that is different than if you speak to me. So if you tell me I won't want to speak to people or respond back as much, and this is all gonna come around all full circle. Everything's gonna make sense by the end of the video. So stick around. You wanna respond less and speak less. And you feel no need to, okay? If someone talks to you, when you meditate, you're so in the present moment, them talking to you doesn't necessarily mean that you have to respond. It doesn't force you to do anything because you're in your center. You're not gonna get knocked off center. So a con to some of y'all might be y'all won't respond to people or y'all will speak less. Speaking less just means you don't feel the need to talk as much. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't feel the need to talk as much. These can be pros or cons depending on your personality type. If you're a nationally allowed person, if you speak a little less, you might be the perfect middle ground. If you're nationally a quiet person and then you speak less, you ain't talking nothing. What did you saying? You ain't saying a word, bro. People don't even know you exist, you know what I'm saying? If you barely, if you never talk. All right, on to number three, con of meditation. Extreme self-awareness of the good and the bad. Okay, so y'all should know this one was coming. When you meditate, man, you are aware of the good things in your life, the good habits you have, and uh, also the dark side. The dark side is what I'm talking about right here. Let's say you have a fear or you have a phobia or something like that or something is just eating you up inside. You are becoming more self-aware so that becomes brought to the front of your mind, okay? It becomes brought to the front of your mind because you don't have as many things distracting you. You know, when you meditate, you tend to get rid of other distractions, too. And you tend to bring yourself in the present moment. So if you meditate and you less on social media, watching TV, and you have to deal with your own problems, your own bad flaws, you got to look in the mirror. Oh, shit. We got some problems for some of us. Me, too. Shit, I got some problems. <laughs> hey, you got to look in the mirror at your own self for a little bit. Hey, a lot of work need to be done. And a lot of us ain't ready to... uh become aware of all our problems because it can feel like a big burden when you become aware of all the things you need to improve on and fix it can feel like a burden man that's why the tv and entertainment industry wants you on go 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 they, they give you these pleasures so you never have to work on yourself and do the grunt work but when you start meditating and you become aware more self-aware you can't run from it no more, man. You can't you can't run from it. You're too self-aware. You see it. Like it's if you have a problem with cigarettes and you start meditating, that's a bad example. But I, I used to be addicted to nicotine. Let's use that. I used to be addicted to vaping. 
when you meditate, it's going to be at the forefront of your mind because it's a problem. It's a desire you can't control. And you're going to be aware of it. That's the thing. Meditation makes you more self-aware, right? And once you become more self-aware, this problem keeps popping up. Keeps popping up. Keeps popping up. Keeps popping up. And you got to make a decision, man. You got to fix it, dog. It's that simple. You got to fix the problem. Or let it take over your brain and consume your thoughts. At the same time, if it's good, like you did something good, you're going to be living off a high, man. Shit, a real high. A high that came from inside of you and not somewhere else, like from a drug or an external person. You're going to be living off a high because that good thought, that good energy is going to circulate throughout your brain. Okay? And it's internal, so it's hard to get rid of it. It's internal. So if you're feeling real good or real bad, it's internal. So it's going to last a good little minute. But just know, all things change. All emotions change, you know. Meditation is just about being in the moment. The moment's going to change. So it ain't, it ain't nothing big to worry about. The next one. If you meditate, comment below what you think about this one. Because if you don't meditate... This may sound crazy, but your brain don't stop talking. Y'all probably like, what do you mean? My brain don't stop talking now. It's different. When you meditate, your thoughts become more clear, right? You put clear thoughts where the engine never stop running, and you got a consistent stream of decent to good ideas, thoughts, sentences, and you just sitting here like, dang, you can't ignore it because it's so clear. Like, if I, if I sat in front of you and I said, my shirt is red. My shirt is red. My shirt is red. If I said it a hundred times, you're not, you not ignoring me, dog. Because you know why? I'm clear. I'm concise. I'm loud. There's nobody else in the background. When you meditate... The background noise in your head kind of goes away because you're able to ground yourself, sit there, sit in your thoughts. You become more comfortable there. And the background noise sort of, you know, sort of dissipates, you know. But one of the downsides is your thoughts become clear. So it seems like your brain never stops talking. You might come up with some amazing ideas in this. Especially when you taking in stimuli from inside of you and not, you know, from a TV show or something like that. If you're sitting in your own thoughts and your brain won't stop talking, you can come up with some great ideas, you know. But it can feel like a burden sometimes because sometimes you just want your brain to shut up. I'm telling you, hey, you want it to shut up. Okay. Next, we got people who don't meditate. You won't want to be around them very long. Okay. This is when anything, when you work on yourself, in my opinion, the more you work on that area of your life, people that didn't work on it, you're not going to be around them as much. And meditation is probably a bigger one because you got to understand the age we live in. We live in an age with TikTok. We live in an age with Netflix. We live in an age with all these things that give you a short intention span we live in an age where you know we're being abused mentally mentally we're being abused mentally we're being taken advantage of and when you finally do the work on yourself and you start meditating people that don't meditate you will see it clear as day you will see through their soul and you can tell they not good with the man up here. They not good with the man in their head. Mentally, they not good up there, man. Because they keep going outside for external ways to fix it. They keep trying to find new drugs to fix their problems. A new girl to, to fill the void inside of them. New friends to give them more action, more fun. And when you think about it, why would they do that if they didn't, if they had it all up here? If they were content in their mind, you know, why would they be going out here looking for all these different things? 
That's one that y'all gotta watch out for. People that don't meditate, you probably won't want to be around them much. And that's probably 99% of people. So it might get lonely for some of us, but... And that, then it comes down to my last point. This last point is going to bring everything full circle. You can't relate to normal people as much. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a con. You can't relate to normal people. Isn't it good to be a one percenter out of 99%? Yes, it is. I feel like it's a good thing to be special. But, though, who the heck want to not be able to relate to people? Like, bro, I want to be able to relate to somebody when they talk about their favorite TV show. But I can't. I don't watch TV. They talk about the game last night. I didn't watch the game last night. They talk about the news. I don't watch the news. So it creates this weird thing. It's like you want to be able to connect to people and form these easily easy connections, but you can't because everything is on a deeper level. With you, it's not surface level. It's deeper than that. So it's going to be harder for you to relate to people that don't have a life. People wake up and go to bed with nothing on their mind that gets them going. You know, something that they even have, they don't have a passion. If they don't have something that they truly love, it, man, I'm going to say it like this. Relating to regular people is going to be more difficult. Your reason for relating is going to be different than mine. I'm 17 years old. I go to high school. I'm a senior. You might be 30. Your reason for relating to not being able to relate to other people might be totally different than mine. But at the end of the day, we both probably going to have problems with relating to normal, everyday Joes that you see on the street and when you start to meditate because you think see things for what they truly are. And yes, you see them for what they truly are, but you can't, it's hard to relate to people, man. Especially normal people. Like, I'm not talking about your friends. Your friends might, they might be a little bit like you. I'm talking about a normal person. You know, you walk up to a random person in on the street, in the classroom, at work, customer, anywhere. If they don't meditate, them being able to relate to you on a deep level is going to be very difficult. Because your life is, your brain has rewired itself through these months of meditation. It has literally rewired itself. It's like talking to somebody that watches porn versus somebody that doesn't watch porn. Their brain are wired differently. Surface level, it may seem similar, but you go a little bit deeper, the differences are like night and day, man. Somebody that watches porn, somebody that doesn't watch porn, somebody that meditates and doesn't, they, they, they get further and further apart the deeper you go into their personalities. All right, man. Thanks for watching my video. Hope y'all learned something. Hope y'all enjoyed it. And, man, stay tuned for Meditation Pros.